Hey everyone! Welcome to the Chronicles of Yarnia, the podcast from Montclair's local yarn store. My name's Amanda, and tonight we are starting uh, the second week of the Flax Light um, Knit Along on Zoom. So that's what we're doing today. Um, I'm your host, Amanda, and I am knitting a Flax Light for my son, Charlie. So Charlie is four, he uh, four and a half really. And I got this skein of Gage Dye Works, which I talked about last time, but I'll reiterate for folks who are joining us for the first time. Um, I got this skein of Gage Dye Works um, yarn back probably five years ago, certainly before Charlie was born. Um, and I got it for my older son, Eric, because what the dyer did here was she took the flax light pattern, which is a free pattern by Tin Can Knits, and she um, dyed it specifically to make that sweater. So it is, and we'll see as we go through the yoke, there's a pretty cool gradient, like rainbow gradient that's going to come out as we do the the yoke of the sweater and then as you can see like most of the sweater is blue and then there's some green on there for cuffs and trim on the bottom so that's the plan that's my skein to do the flax light and let's see um uh anything else i guess update from last week um i see folks are joining well, I'll, and I'll update from last week later. Um, hey, Kathleen, I see you're joining tonight again. Thank you so much. Um, hi from Los Angeles. Hi, and Dory's here. Yay. And Jasmine. Yay. So good to see everybody. I hope you enjoyed last week. Um, we had a lot of fun and um, now looking forward to continuing. So last week, um, I started this pattern and cast on, and um, I thought I would finish the whole neckband during our time, our hour, but I didn't. Um, so I took it home and I finished it. So that's what we have from last week. It's a little neckband. That's all. You can already see the color starting to change here. Yay. So this is the neckband. It's just done in one by one rib. Um, and I'm using size two needles. The pattern says to use a 16 inch circular, but I don't think for a size four to six, I would be able to get around a 16 inch circular, or maybe if I did, it would be like really stretched out and I didn't want to do that. So I'm using my Addy Flexi Flips, which are sort of a hybrid between like very short little you know, circular needles. You can't make a circle with them though. Um, and double pointed needles. So it's almost like knitting um, magic loop, if you know what that is, where you have one long circular needle and you have half your stitches on the front and half on the back. You do that, but instead of having the loop part, you just have two needles instead. And I really like Addy Flexi Flips. I use these a lot, especially for sleeves. Um, and when I'm doing like smaller circumference stuff like this neck band. Okay, so let's see. Do I need to do, I need to do any other admin stuff before we jump in? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I hear knocking in my store. I don't think that's at the door. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm going to ignore it. <laughs> um. But anyway, okay, so let's look at the pattern first because I need to look at the pattern and figure out what we're doing next. So again, we're looking at the Flax Light from Tin Can Knits. This is a great pattern. Um, it's free on Ravelry. It's part of their simple collection. Um, there's also a flax sweater, no light, just flax. And that is basically the same sweater, but instead of using a fingering weight yarn and smaller needles, use a worsted weight yarn and bigger needles. So it goes a little faster. Um, and you can see they've got 
all sorts of sizes here, all the way from zero to four months up to six XL, up to a 66 and a half inch chest, uh, uh, yeah, chest circumference. That's what this A measurement is here. Um, and let's see. So last week we started the pattern here. We read about it. We started our yoke. There's two options, option one and option two. And I'm doing option one, which is just starting the ribbing right away. Option two, you go back and put on your neck band after you're done, which makes it a little more sturdy, I guess. Um, which you might want to do if you're doing like an adult size sweater, which obviously the fabric is heavier for a four to six year old size sweater. It's not going to be that heavy, so it's not going to pull on the neckline and drag it down. So I'm just starting the neckline right away with option one. And that's all I finished. Okay. And you can see, up, I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't think you can. I highlighted it in my pattern, but it doesn't show up here. So um, I'm doing the four to six year old size, which is right here under the size note. And you can see that that is the I'm looking at zero to six months is outside the parentheses. Six to 12 is the first one inside, then one to two, two to four, two to four, and four to six. So the fourth number inside the parentheses, not bold, is my size. So I am going on to all options right here. All you don't see my mouse on the screen, I know. Um, so all options. I'm supposed to knit all the way around, increasing. Let's count one, two, three, four, eight stitches evenly spaced. Okay, and I have one, two, three, 104 stitches on my needle. Oh, you're gonna make me do math. That's not nice. Okay. All right, math wizards or people who have access to their phone. 104 divided by eight. 80 divided by eight is 10. That's another 24. So it must be 13, right? Did I do that right? 13 stitches. Woohoo. Okay, so I'm going to knit 13 stitches and add one, knit 13 stitches and add one all the way around. All right, let me scoot over here so you can see me. Um, all right, and let me check that pattern again, actually. Aha, look at the end of option one. Change to larger needles. That's an important instruction. I suspected that was in there. Okay, so I'm also going to change to larger needles. Ta-da! Read your pattern. Yes, Mel, you beat me to it. I do need to change to larger needles. Okay, and so I do have my larger needles right here. Um, I have flexi flips, which I am 90% sure are size fives because that's what I am 90% sure I brought. Yes, they are. They are size fives. I always check because, I mean, sometimes I don't bring the right size needles. Um, it's been known to happen. Okay, so now, and oh, y'all are so nice with the math. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like I should get kudos for that gold star. <laughs> I got 13. Yay. All right. Um, I'm going to move my bag if I don't need that in my lap. Okay. So 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Um, okay, and now I'm going to make one. Um, so let's see if I can 
Okay, the way that I do that is I'm pulling apart these stitches. I just made this one here and I've got these the stitch on my left needle here. And in between those stitches is this bar, right? There's a string, a piece of yarn connecting the loop that I just knit to the loop that's on my left needle here, this green one. So I'm going to use my left needle and go under that bar. You see that? I'm under that bar. It's like that. I go from front to back because that, if I'm just like randomly making one, we'll talk about left and right in a little bit. Then I'm going to knit that through the back loop. So I put my needle going from right to left under that strand in the back. Boop, boop, come on. You can do it. There you go. And then wrap the yarn and bring it out. And now I have, see, created a little stitch coming out of the bar in between, which is going to add one stitch to my, boop, boop, to my stitch count. And I'm going to continue doing that seven more times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Oops, 11, 12, 13. I forgot I was knitting up too close to my face. Here we go. Make another one front to back, knit it through the back loop. This is a actually a make one left. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Need some more yarn. Uh, new. I got a little a mini yarn barf in there. I did ten, right? Ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. There we go. Make one. Now because I have, okay, well, presuming I have an even number of stitches on my, the same number of stitches on my front needle and back needle, I should have 13 more stitches on this needle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, I don't actually want to make one at the end of my needle. Um, because that's sort of a pain. I just would rather not put my increase at the very end of a row between, you know, between the needles. If I was working on a 16 inch circular, like if I had a adult size where the neckband had a wider circumference and I was already on a 16 inch, it wouldn't matter because this would all be on the same cord. But since I'm on flexi flips and I'm going to switch needles here to the next needle, I'm actually going to put my increase between the 12th and 13th stitch, which for the purpose of what we're doing here is fine. We're increasing stitch stitches evenly all the way around, but it doesn't have to be like exactly evenly all the way around. What you basically don't want to do is like bunch up all of your increases at one part of your neckline, right? Like increase 13 at the beginning or something like that, or eight or whatever it is. Because then you're going to have like an even neck band with this wonky growth out of the side of it. <laughs> um, and that's no good. So that's why they say to space them evenly. Um, and doing the division helps. Sometimes if I'm being lazy or there's like 200 stitches on my needle and I'm going to like space them evenly, I'll just throw like random removable stitch markers where it looks evenly spaced and do it that way. Um, instead of like counting out 200 stitches divided eight times or something, that's a lot of work. Um, but for this, I can count 13 a few times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. <laughs> Yay, Kathleen knows that 
Arithmetic is not my strong suit. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, Ida, you can so knit front and back. Seven, eight, I can't nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Um you can knit front and back. Um, and it wouldn't be a crisis to use it now. So when you do a knit front and back, it makes what looks like a pearl bump as the increased stitch. So a make one, here I'm doing a make one left, but a make one right would look virtually identical um, for this application. This creates a twisted stitch. Um, make uh, knit front and back would create a regular knit stitch and then a, what looks like a pearl stitch, which is you sometimes okay and sometimes not. I have, I don't know if we have that little yellow dress here anymore. Kathleen can probably tell me um, if we still have the little yellow dress that I made that had, that the instruction said knit front and back and it created odd pearl bumps in the garter. If I can find it, I'll I'll show you what the difference is. Um, that was five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And then I'm just going to increase again one stitch before the end. Do you know what I just did? I did not switch to my fives before I started this side of the collar. Oh, well, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm not taking it out. Um, but I'll just have to remember when I come back to this side, it's on a two and I gotta switch to the fives. Oh, well. <laughs> So now I have this front is on a five, this back one's on a two. I'm putting this two way over there and switching to my next five. Oh my I do this all the time. Um, oh, okay, it's near, it's with the baby stuff. Let me see if I can find it real quick because I think you'll like the visual. Uno memento. Here it is. Okay. Okay, this is the little pearl vest. Um, it's a great pattern. I think it's fantastic. Uh, I knit it in like a day and a half. Um, it's magic because look at this. It's a little vest for a kid and it has this opening. You just close with a little button at the top, but all of this part is knit flat to make the opening. So the garter part, you knit back and forth flat. That means no purling. And then you join in the round here and you just knit, knit, knit. And there's no purling until you get to the very end. And then there's two rows of purling to make this garter at the end and then a bind off. So if you're an anti-purl person, then um, you might really like this for a little baby gift, especially summer babies. It's super cute. But you see how there are, this pattern also had increase so many, you know, evenly or randomly, actually. She said do them randomly so you didn't create like lines in your pattern. Um, but you see how there's like little divots in the garter? She suggested knit front and back, and each of those little divots is a pearl bump, right, from a knit front and back. Here, you can see the pearl bump here to the pearl bump here. So using that method in something like this can really, that, that bump, will disrupt the flow yeah like right here in the front there's a big one 
here. There's like an extra bump that really disrupts the garter, right? Like it looks uneven. Um, and I was sort of disappointed that, with that when I made this. Um, but then I figured I'd use it because it's instructional. I left it. Ta-da! So <laughs> you get the benefit of my uh, of my mm, learning experience. So okay, come on, out we go. All right, let's see what the pattern says to do next. Um, okay, so now we did this increasing eight stitches evenly spaced. Okay, now we have an important row in this sweater, marker setup. So now we're going to mark the four places in this pattern where raglans, those increases we talked about last time, um, where the raglan lines are going to be on the yoke of the sweater. Okay. Okay. And we're also, you'll see on the sleeves, there's pearl stitches on the sleeves. Um, or it's actually garter. So it's garter on the sleeve. So every other row you pearl, just in the sleeves. Um, and yeah, so we're setting up that as well. Okay. Marker setup. Pearl. One, two, three. 18 place marker knit one two three four 38 18 and 38 twice place marker cool all right pearl 18 place marker knit 38 place marker all right here we go guys um i have my markers all set i brought this little these are my markers i brought i couldn't decide beginning of round so i brought these ones, these are, I have four little coconut markers. That's these guys, the colorful stitch markers, which I love. You can see they're like little round enamel circles. Um, they're super smooth. They don't, you don't like feel them when you're knitting, um, which I like for raglans because I got too much going on in my head. Like I'll get distracted if I've got like too many pretty things going on. I like to use my pretty markers for beginning of row. So I brought two options for that and I'll have to decide how I feel when I get there. Um, Pearl 18, place marker. All right, here we go. Pearl 18. Beep, beep, beep. Two. All right. Uh, red can be my first one. All right. Now I knit 38. I'm going to see if I have 38 stitches left on this needle, which I hope I do. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. Yay. Okay, so I can just knit across the rest of this needle. That's one bonus of having um, having your stitches evenly divided. That when you have to do something twice, you do it once on the front, once on the back, and go to the end. <laughs> Yay. Um, all right.
Let's see. Uh, it is pretty rainy here. It's rainy and cold now. Last week it was nice and warm. It was definitely, it felt like September. And I was wearing like, Kathleen reminded me of my, my sweater dress, but it was like that. I don't think I even wore a coat. And now it's chilly. It'll be in the 30s. And I brought out my wool and silk mohair sweater, which is like cozy. This one is quite warm. If you want a warm sweater, Aaron White wool with silk mohair, that's a warm sweater. Um, oh, and that's where another marker would go. But I can't put a marker there because it's the end of a row. Um, I mean, it's the end of a needle. So we're going to pretend there's a marker there. I'll put one there when I switch to circular. 18, one. No, everybody's yelling at their screen right now. I know they are. Because I got to put that two away and get a five. This is a... <laughs> um, this is a five. Okay. Okay, who yelled at their screen? No, switch to the five. Pearl. Oh my goodness. Two, three, one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay. And I'm going to put this here. And if I have to, I might have to think about this or try to switch to the um, circular needle because I'm going to, I do not want my raglans emerging from the divides of my from where my needles join here that's not helpful because we're going to on every row have that problem i mentioned last time where i'm supposed to have an increase at the end or beginning of a row and that's just not fun we're not going to do that so i might have to do some stitch rearranging in a moment. Okay. Okay, now we've done this twice. Great. Okay, my markers are half set up, but they're not really because I've got to put these other two markers in. Let me look at this pattern again. Um, okay. Uh. Interesting. So your beginning of round here is actually at a raglan. Huh. There you go. I would usually expect the beginning of round to be at the center back. But unless I'm missing something. Marker set up. Place marker. Can I actually... No. This guy... No. Um, see, this is how the regular markers indicate divisions between right sleeve, front sleeve, back sleeve. Okay. All right. So, then what are we doing? Knit front and back. Knit two stitches before the raglan marker. Knit front and back. 
knit one, slip one. Four times. Ah, we're going to do your knit front and back increases because I'm doing this exactly to pattern. Great. We're going to use knit front and back. Um, all right. Okay, so to make my life easier, we're going to adjust this, um, the stitches here. I'm going to put a purple stitch marker where my last one was supposed to be. And then I'm going to just, um, what am I going to do? I'm going to tink back probably five stitches just so I'm at, so I don't have, oh, maybe three. Mm. I could put them on another needle. I don't feel like doing it. D -d -d. It's just so that this raglan, I will probably, after tonight, I'll probably rearrange. Actually, actually after tonight, those will be big enough to put on a 16 inch circular and it won't matter anymore. Um, and then I also need to put a stitch marker here um, and then just shift five or six stitches over to this side. Eight, I guess. All right, there we go. Now, all right, now our stitch markers are dividing our sleeves and exist where they're supposed to exist. And our beginning of round is now a few stitches into this needle. I hope that's not too confusing. Do you understand why I did that? Um, this is a five, right? It's definitely not. Okay, that's the other five. Goodness, guys. Ah. Okay, all right. There we go. Ah. All right, nice. Now I have this set up. So now my beginning of round is still this purple marker here, um, but it's not also at this intersection of two needles, which means I'm gonna be able to work my increases a little more effectively um, and frankly, not get confused about where to put them. So now that I'm knitting with all the same size needle, I think it looks like it. Okay, I'm at the beginning of the round again. Yay. All right, now I'm ready for the next thing. Okay. Oh my goodness. Marker setup is done. Set up round one. Knit front and back. Knit two stitches before the raglan marker. Knit front and back. Knit one. Slip marker four times. So... At the end of the last round, ah, uh, okay. Okay, so at the end of the last round, we placed a marker. When I placed that marker, it should have been on my right needle. So I placed the marker on my right needle and I'm ready to knit front and back the first stitch of this round. So I'm knit, knit front and back. So I'll show you this increase. Boop, boop, boop. Here we go. Knit front and back. First, I knit regularly. Knit Hmm. There we go. I knit regularly. So I'm going to knit this stitch like this. I pull through again. I knit continental. So I pull that stitch through. Then I leave that one on the, normally I would take that off the needle, but I don't. I'm going to leave it on the needle, bring my working needle behind the needle with the stitch on it that I'm working next. And then I go from front to back in the back leg of that stitch and loop my yarn again, bring it back through that stitch. Ta -da. So now I have two stitches 
when I take off, um, take the stitch off the left needle. So one stitch became two, and you can see on this one where that little pearl, pearl bump is that Kathleen and I were talking about. Okay, so that is a knit front and back. The good thing about these lives is if you missed it, it's going to be up on YouTube forever. Um, so it will be there for you to take a look at. Um, and there are probably, I'm certain there are much better, much clearer than looking at my second camera here of knit front and back if it is very confusing. Um, but now we're knitting to two stitches before the marker, right? And then we're gonna do another knit front and back, knit one, slip marker, knit front and back, and knit to the next marker. Dee, 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 dee. And now we're gonna do all the way around. Oh, not all the way around. We're going to continue that pattern all the way around. So two stitches before I get to my next marker, I'm going to knit front and back, knit one, then knit front and back. Knit one, slip the marker, and knit front and back. <laughs> the mohair on my sweater is sticking to my yarn. <laughs> Let's see. Wow, this green is really coming out now. Yay! Green is the first stripe, I guess, on this muted rainbow. Okay, I'm two stitches before a marker, so I knit front and back, I knit one, slip marker, knit front and back, and just keep knitting, knitting, knitting. So after this row, I'll have increased 16 stitches since we started tonight, right? because I did eight stitches around, remember? Back to the two stitches before the next marker, knit front and back. Um, and then this round I'm increasing, slip marker, knit front and back. I'm increasing eight stitches, yay. Okay. Oh man, I wonder how many dislikes this video will get because I can't knit with the right size needles. My goodness, <laughs> that's so silly. Oh, I was telling my son, Eric, that I was on a live tonight and he's thrilled because he watches like lives of Minecraft and Pokemon. Um, so he said that I was supposed to tell you guys to smash that like button, subscribe and hit that alarm bell. <laughs> so Eric, if you're watching, I made sure to say smash that like button. He said I let opportunity slip by next week, last week. So there you go. Um, at least cancel out those who are critical of my ability to measure needle gauge um and i think at the end of this round i'm supposed to knit front and back again right yeah knit front and back right before this marker um and then the next round is knit one pearl 18 
knit one, slip marker, knit to marker, slip marker, twice. Aha. Got it. Oh, this was this was supposed to be a knit front and back. Okay, so the next row, I'm going to knit one, curl 18. Is that true? I'm gonna check again. Yeah, I'm looking at setup round two, knit one, curl 18, yeah, one, two, three, four, yeah, 18. Knit one slip marker. Okay, 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 okay. We got this, we got this. So pearl 18, I did two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven, twelve, ten, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17. I might do a little knit one and then from the red marker to the yellow marker, I just knit straight. So that's easy. Um, I'm remembering this sweater now. Like I said, I knit this five years ago. Um, for one of my friends who had a baby, I knit the three to six month size or whatever the second size is um, out of a skein of Tosh sock, I think, and like a denim color. It was super cute. Um, but now I'm remembering that the width of the sleeve increases, but the width of the garter panel. So there is a um, I'll do on this arm. There's a uh, there's a line of garter that runs down the arm here, and garter's just every rose, each every other rose knit, every other rose pearl, and the garter width stays constant. So I might do some extra stitch markering here in a moment, just so I don't mess up on the width of that garter how's it 8 40 already i talk a lot and it takes me a while to get through a sweater setup that's how it's 8 40 but once it gets set up it goes super fast um once i get a sweater set up we're purling 18 then it becomes my conference call knitting I'll work on it um, during the day at work. And before I know it, this whole whole yoke section will be done. Okay. And now I knit one slip marker and knit again to that purple beginning around. Yay. Hmm. I think this might be big enough at this point to put on a 16 inch circular, which would be somewhat more comfortable. We might try it out this round. Worst case is I end up with a dangling flexi flip at the end for a few rounds until it, I add some more stitches. Okay. <laughs> See, last week there was less brain work because I was just knitting and purling. I could tell you stories. This week, I think the setup. <laughs> okay. Um, almost, almost. Okay. So done with that row. Now what do we just do on the next row? The next row, so all the rows of this, I think this is true. I'll read the pattern and confirm. So we just finished setup round two. 
Now we can go on. The garter stitch sleeve panel is now established. Garter stitch in the round, you knit one round and purl one round. The next round is knitting because we just purled the last round. So we continue to work the center 18 stitches on the sleeves in garter stitch and the remainder of the pullover over, pull and stockinette. As I mentioned, you might find it helpful to place extra markers on each side of the garter panel. I will indeed find that helpful. So now we're just going to do these two rounds. Let's see, several times. Um, and round one is knit front and back, knit two stitches before the raglan marker, marker, knit front and back and knit one, slip the marker. Do that four times. So on the rounds that are just knit on the sleeves, those are the ones we increase. Then the next row, you just, you have those purl sections on the sleeves and those ones you don't increase at the markers. So every row you're going to be doing something. You're either going to be increasing or you're going to be purling on a sleeve. One of the two, but never both. And that's round one and two. Okay, and we're going to do this a total of eight, nine, nine, 11 times. And then you'll see um, you'll see down here under the all sizes, they tell you how many stitches you should have on your needle. And they tell you how many should be on the sl each sleeve and how many should be on the back and the front. And that is super helpful. I really appreciate it when a pattern designer does that. And if they don't do it, I try to figure it out myself and figure out how much should be on each sleeve and on the front and the back. Um, because that's a great checkpoint to say like, okay, do I have the same number of stitches? Because it is very easy to like miss an increase on one and it's better to work an increase in now than it would be to like figure out later, oh, I've missed four increases or something like that. Um, and then I'm reading on after all sizes, it says you're going to work even, no increases, but keep doing the garter panel. Um, and then it tells you what length to knit the yoke for. For option one, we're going to knit until it's five, and, uh, it's till it's six inches deep, measured for the cast on, ending with a round two, which is the pearl ones. So that is where I'm going to end. For this week, I'm just going to get to the end of six inches from the cast on edge. That's my goal. All right, so let's start round one. Yay! All right, round one. And I think I'm going to try to move over to, I'm going to do two things on this round. A, I'm going to move over to a five inch circular. I didn't have a five inch circular, or if I did, it's on a deep stash whip project somewhere lost in my room. Fortunately, my local yarn store has a five inch or size five circular 16 inch. So I got that. Um, and I'm also out of coconut stitch markers. So I'm also going to, hey, Kathleen, I'm going to take a stitch markers too. Um, but uh, I actually, I know exactly where all of my stitch markers are. Um, I don't know if you, a year ago, I went through all of my, and actually I showed it again. Um, I went through all of my whips a year ago um, in a special episode, like my whips that are in storage and I'm not working on right now. Oops, upside down. Um, I went through them all. And one of them is a lace weight shawl that has like, 30 pattern repeats going across it. And each one is separated by a stitch marker. And that's where all my stitch markers are. Um, the ones that aren't lost in the couch. So, okay, 
this is what I'm going to do. So we're at the beginning of a round. I am going to, and we're on uh, row one, which starts with a knit front and back. Then knit to the two stitches before the next marker. I love chagu needles. Um, so this is a knit row. That means I'm increasing. Knit to two stitches before the next marker. Knit front and back. knit one, slip the marker. Okay, I'm going to make all of my raglan markers red. We're gonna do that. Okay, uh, and then I slip the marker, then I knit front and back. Let's not forget to actually do what we're supposed to do. Okay, now I knit to the next marker. Ooh, I'm color changing too. You see this? Now it's dark green. Oh, color change. My dangly needle is uh, scratching on my chair underneath. It won't for very much longer. Okay. That one can go away. I'm going to continue to the next raglan to two stitches before the next raglan. Two stitches before the next marker. Knit front and back, knit one. And I'm going to make this stitch marker yellow, red now because red means raglan. Knit across. Ho, ho, ho. Guys, red means raglan and green means garter. That's going to be our color coding on this um, on this pattern. Do, do, do. Because that's the way my brain works. <laughs> I need phonetic cues. Okay, two stitches before, knit front and back slip marker. This is a raglan marker, so I'm going to change it to red. And then knit front and back. Knit to the beginning. Yay. Do, do, do. Hold on. Yes. Um, at the end of the needle, but not at the end of the row because I have my rows in the middle of needles. Um, okay, now. Okay, now we're two stitches before the end here. Knit front and back. Knit one. Okay, and my beginning of round marker, let's see if this will go around the 16 inch. I sort of think it will now. Mm -hmm. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Yay, yeah, it's gonna go. It's gonna go. Look at that. Sweet, nice. Yay, so now it goes around the 16 inch. Circular, so I'm gonna be circular um, for the rest of the body of this sweater. You'll see those flexi flips come back when we get to sleeves. I'm at the beginning of a round. Um, and since I'm beginning of a round, I'm actually gonna use my little beep, beep, beep. Um, 
black pearl magic stitch marker as a beginning of round it's still it's pink which is in the red family so we're going to call it red um okay now we have to maintain the same width of garter so i'm looking now that i've added another stitch i'm actually going to have to knit two stitches then i'm going to place a g is for green guard green is for garter g is green is garter okay and then i'm going to start purling 18 two three four Good. Two stitches left. Place that green is for garter marker. And then two knits to the our red is for raglan and now we're gonna knit across the front yay that is a much more comfortable setup yay okay so now i've got my raglans and my garter markers set and since this is a pearl row i'm not doing any increases i'm just knitting around until I get to those uh, until I get to my next raglan because now this is the front of the sweater um, okay I'm here at my red for raglan I'm gonna knit two on this place a green green is for garter yay so since it's not an increase row it's a pearl row i'm going to pearl 18. Okie dokie, is that 18? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Why don't I have two stitches? I think I forgot to make an increase. Because that's 18. And I should have 18 stitches between my markers. So I'm going to place a greenish for garter. I noticed that I'm I have only one stitch here. I should have two. So I'm actually going to do a knit front and back in this row. So now I have two stitches before I move that marker. Now I have the right number of stitches. You guys probably noticed right away when I forgot to do an increase there, but I was chit chatting and I didn't notice. So I'm going to get to the end of this row and then review what we did because it is nine o'clock. so this week was super busy it always is i feel like setting up the yoke of a sweater is a busy activity to do um but then once it's established we're just going to keep doing the same thing we just did two rows one of the increase row that's knit all the way around one of the pearl row right i'm at my marker i'm actually not going to do that last stitch that way my um beginning of round marker doesn't fall off i don't use stitch stoppers i just pull my stitches down on the needles um, but if i don't leave an extra stitch on that um on that round, then my 
beginning of round marker falls off and that's sort of a pain. Okay, so what do we do? Look at this guys. We established our raglans. So now we have four raglans. The red are where our raglans are. Raglan, 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 raglan. And we added stitch markers for our garter section because if I don't have the stitch markers, I'm totally going to blow past this garter section many times. So the G is for green, G is for garter. Those are set as well. Now I'm going to con continue doing that round one and two all the way till I get six inches from the cast on edge, right? So I'll take my, I have a wrist ruler convenient here. That'll do. I'll take my, which I actually have in the bottom of my bag as well. I always have the wrist. I was wearing it last week, but I'll start at the cast on edge and measure how much do I have so far. And right now I have like, I measure to the um, bottom of the cord here. And I have like one and 1.75 inches. So I got quite a bit to do before next week, but that's okay. It actually won't take me that long. Um, that will be my conference call knitting, and I will have these uh, these rows done for you next week. And just a reminder, here we are. We're going to the end of um, the four option one. So doing rounds one and two, a total of 11 times for me and the size that I'm doing, then working with no increases on the knit round until for option one, I get to six inches in length from that cast on edge. So gone a couple minutes over this week, but hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. I'll answer them next week. Um, or if I check the comments during the week, I'll answer them during the week. Um, and you can always uh, join next week and add questions to the chat. So hope you had a great time. Thank you so much for knitting along with me and I'll see you next week. Bye.